Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. I'm Dr. Mawati Razman from School of Human Resource Development and Psychology, Sharps Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, FSSHUTM. Thank you to each and every one of you for being here with us today. And we are delighted to have you with us to join our Ajang for Faisal Lecture Series by Yang Berbahagia, Datuk Sunyaida Idris, Senior Vice President of Hong Yong Investment Bank. We are honored to have you, Datuk. And it's very pleasure too to have our team here, Professor Dr. Zaida Tuntasil, the person who always support and inspire us in FSSH. And we also have Chair of School of Human Resource Development and Psychology, Associate Professor Dr. Siti Aisha Abdul Rahman, uh, our leader for this session. So it's wonderful to see all of you here. Okay, now let me welcome our Dean, Professor Dr. Zaida. Don't don't deliver opening speech. Silakan go. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dr. Imawati. Uh, of course, uh, yang saya hormati, yang berbahagia, uh, our speaker for today, Dr. Zunaida Idris, Senior Vice President Hong Leong Investment Bank, uh, and also our adjunct professors of Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, UTM. We have also together with us another speaker, Puan Sarima, the Securities Industry De from Securities Industry Development Corporation, SIDC. And also, I would like to say uh, hello to my sisters, Assistant Professor Dr. Siti Aisha Fanate, uh, the Chair of the School of Human Resource and Development and Psychology, Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities. And of course, uh, to our moderator, Dr. Irma, thank you very much uh, for today's sessions. So, uh, as we know that we have today FSS Adjunct Professor Lecture Series with Dr. Zunaida Idris and also Puan Sarima. Uh, we believe uh, today titles and topic is totally new to some of us because we are academicians from the university. So uh, investing our money to stock might be totally totally new to us. My personal opinion also, I don't have any experience eh, invest uh, any of my money to stock. But anyway, today's session, I think it's very interesting topics that that we can actually uh, share, we can actually learn new knowledge from our expert. When we decide to appoint uh, uh, Dr. Zunaida as one of our adjunct professors, we believe that at higher ed, especially UTM, we need people from industries to involve, to be a co-lecturers, uh, uh, to teach our subjects and to expose our students with opportunity outside UTM. So uh, today, uh, the topic is very interesting. And for those who join us through YouTube and through Facebook, I think this is a very interesting topics because uh, as I did mention, for me, before I'm going to commit my money for investing, I need to know where and when to invest. And to do research on where to invest, need a guidance and assistance from experts. Although some of us are professors from the university, but to do research in, in, in related to investing a money is totally new to us. So, voila, today we have two experts. They're going to guide us to craft our future to invest in the stock. So for me, the key points of uh, investing your money is that investing must lead to happier ending. And today is the right topic for us to hear from the expert. I think with that, uh, thank you very much again eh, to Yang Berbahagia Datuk Zunaida Idris and Puan Sarima for accepting our invitation today for our adjunct professors lecture series and to Dr. Irma as the moderators, to the teams of the schools of human resource and uh, development and psychology sharp uh, headed by uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Siti Aisha, the teams, the ladies who are actually behind the session for today is Dr. Anna, Dr. Shafika, eh, Dr. Irza. Thank you for very much eh, to assist the faculty to make sure that the today event is successful. With that, wabilai taufiq wa hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Back to you, Dr. Irma. Okay, thank you so much, Prof, for a meaningful speech. So before we start, let me share our Professor Ajang info. Dr. Zunaida Idris currently is a Senior Vice President Corporate 
and Institutional Business Group CIBG, Public Holder Investment Bank Berhad. And that has a vast experience in area of strategic planning, uh, business development, and has more than 27 years experiences in investment bank with special focus in area of the stock broking industry. Interesting, right? And that is why that completes your career with strong track record in a highly competitive industry and committed, passionate about the delivering in the best uh, throughout her career in the investment bank. She is a leader with a vision, a passion, and she has successfully developed and creating new leaders and talents within her team, while at the same time encourage the members to grow and excel individually. And with her 27 years of experiences in stock broking, she managed to lead Kondo Investment Bank, eh, HLIB, institutional business team, to be highly ranked in the industry and there are many awards uh, speaking engagement and honor that Datuk have received is such as woman icon 2019 by business excellent research group singapore okay congrats Datuk so our topic today uh, as our teams uh, mentioned before this will be on how to invest in stock for beginners and it's very interesting topic and maybe some of us have intention to invest, uh, but uh, do not know how to start. So I invite our Professor Echang, Datuk Zunaida Idris, to share her knowledge about this. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum to all. Uh, first, let me thank you, Dr. Irmawati, for the beautiful introduction. And I would like to thank you to Professor Dr. Zaidatu Tahir, uh, Deans of Faculty of Social Science and Humanities of UTM. I also like to thank you, Chairman of the school, uh, Professor Aisha, who has been working closely with me for the last two years. I also like to thank you uh, to all, uh, you know, the admin, the technology, all the team that have put everything together so that we can have this session today. So on behalf of me and uh, Puan Sarima, we would like to thank everyone. So I think without further ado, uh, I will just share with you a brief uh, history of my career in this investment industry. I started my career as a commodity trader that is related to palm oil, where basically uh, when we do trade during that time, you know, the buyer and the seller we meet at the gallery. It's a very interesting time because you treat using your hand, actually. So on one side of your hand, you actually demonstrate uh, the number or the volume that you're interested of the stock and your right hand. So it's totally a different market when I started in this industry. Then later, I joined Arab Malaysian Merchant Bank. I was given an opportunity uh, to trade in bonds, money market, and also some papers like negotiable certificate of deposit. I started my career actually in the equity of stockbroking in 1993, but that was the most interesting time in stock market. You know, during that time, you may buy and choose any stock in the market in the morning and you will make some money. It's not small, it's at thousands in the afternoon. So that was history. Just a quick brief of you know, my career. And today, uh, I, I started in Arab Malaysian, but today I'm with Hong Leong Investment Bank. I'm already eight years in Hong Leong Investment Bank, but I just want to make a disclaimer. Whatever my presentation today is totally my opinion. It got nothing to do with Hong Leong Investment Bank. So this is basically my thoughts of sharing my 27 years experience in the market. So when we talk about a lot of people are very interested to know about capital market and we want to know about stock market. But let me start before you go anywhere further. Let's start. We need to know we have to have knowledge in everything, it, regardless whether you want to go into stock market, you want to go into in other industry like oil and gas, but you must have knowledge. So what I'm going to share with you today is the overview of the Malaysian capital market and what you need to know about capital market. So when we talk about capital market, 
we need to know the regulators. These are the regulators. The Malaysian capital markets, they have a regulators. That is Bank Nagara, Suruhan Jaya Securities, or known as SC, and also Busa Malaysia. It, all three play a role as a regulators, but they have a different role to play as a regulators in capital market. So when we talk about regulators, let's start with Bank Nagara. This is the most important regulators and the main function. What are the rules of Bank Nagara? Bank Nagara, their function actually is to issue a national currency. So the you know the duet that we spend, the money actually is issued by, by Bank Nagara. And Bank Nagara not only issuing a national currency, they also play a role as a banker and also advisor to the government. And what most important when we talk about capital market, this is where the role of Bank Nagara, they regulate the financial institution and also the credit system in the capital market. So basically, the role of Bank Nagara is to promote monetary and financial stability. It is aimed to provide a conducive environment for sustainable growth and also for the economy. So Benagara, they have to make sure that the monetary policy that they have is more about price stability while maintaining and support the growth. So when we talk about Benagara, we talk about them playing a role as issuance of a national currency. They are also, they act as a banker and advisor to the government and they are the regulators to the financial institution. And one of the most important role that they play is they, play, they regulate the monetary policy or they actually will uh, come up with a monetary policy. Next, Next please. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, that is on Benaga. We are talking about regulators. So, you need to understand the capital market. We have a regulator. So, one of it is Benagara. The next important regulator when we talk about capital market is the role of the SC. What is SC role? So, SC, they have to play a role. Their role is actually is to develop the overall capital market and its market segment. When you talk about capital market, it's not just about stock market. We talk about equity, we talk about bond, we talk about suko, we talk about derivatives, there are fund management and many other products in the capital market. But for today, we will just focus on equity and stock market. So the role of SC, beside developing the capital market, their role also is to ensure and responsible the investment bank and the businesses is to have a high standard of integrity and the investors is protected in the capital market. So SC is to ensure that people like you who invested in the capital market are protected. There are rules and regulations that SC have put in place and that is to protect the investors. So they also, beside protecting, they also have to ensure there's a proper conduct of all market participants. That means from the buy side and the sell side. And they have a lot of regulators and regulatories that people like us who are the players in the market, people like you who are investing in the market. So we are well regulated. How does SC regulate these people? So they have a segment they call they have uh, an enforcement uh, work team and through their supervisory and their surveillance, these are how they ensure that the market participants are uh, intact, conduct a proper high integrity in the market. And the other role of SC is to champion a good corporate governance practices. When we talk about good corporate governance practices, it's not just about the investors, but also the companies, the listed companies. So those companies that is listed on Busa Malaysia, they are also regulated, monitored by SC, and they are they have to ensure that they have a intact in terms of their corporate. Uh, governance practices. For example, one of the examples that I want to share when I talk about a high standard of corporate governance is that, for example, when the CEO meet up with the analysts and they give an indication of their future growth or they give an indication what the companies is going to do, 
So they will be monitored at the end of the quarter or the financial year, what they have shared with the analysts or the general public, they have to at least meet 90% of what they have uh, indicated in the public uh, forum. And besides uh, the top, what I have mentioned, they also have to facilitate the innovation, digital and also sustainable financing ecosystem of the capital market. And SC also play a role as a regulator to facilitate greater cross-border regulatory in the capital market. So basically, you know, I want those out there who never invest in capital market, please ensure you understand the role of the regulators and you know where to go when you invest in the market, when you have problems in the future, you know who you can go to to assist you in the problem in the future if it happens. So, and the third regulators, the most, uh, I would say the frontliner uh, of the regulators, that is Bursa Malaysia. Bursa Malaysia is the frontliner of the regulators of the Malaysian capital market. And they have the duty to maintain a fair and orderly market in the securities and also in the derivatives. They are listed, Malaysian, um, Bursa Malaysia, actually are also listed uh, on Bursa. And what kind of services do they offer? Actually, Bursa offer a trading platform, a clearing, depository and settlement. Beside those services, Bursa also pro uh, are responsible in terms of uh, when a company going listing, for example, that is the role of Bursa. And they also have to make sure that the security quotation given by the corporates is also monitored by Bursa Malaysia. And there are others that is also important role that is played by Bursa. Malaysia. So Bursa play a very important role when we talk about capital market. For example, people, uh, I would say I'm the middle person in the participants of the market. So we play a very important role, but we communicate and we work very closely with Bursa and also Security Commission. So basically, uh, what these are all the regulators, what are their roles? What are their responsibilities? So before you go into the market, you need to understand their role and their responsibilities because you need them to assist you in the market. I I don't I will ask a question later, but I'm not surprised. Uh, few of you who are already in the market, you may not even know the role of Busa and SC. So I hope today. With this session, you have some idea the role of BUSA, role of SC, and also role of Bandagara. So that is uh, the, the overview of the regulators. So now let's go to the interesting part where a lot of people would be interested to know about the players. Okay, when you talk about capital market, when you talk about stock market, there are many players. Okay, just now we talk about the regulators. Then we have what we call a buy side. Who are the buy side? The buy side or the participants are institute and also individuals. So you guys probably are the individual player in the market, but we have an insti player. When we talk about institutional player, we are talking about GLC, and we also have the next slide, please. We also have a non-GLC, but when we talk about GLC, we talk about like EPF, PMB, Coop, Tabung Haji, Mara, all these institutions actually they invest in stock market, but they invest on behalf of you. So for those who say that, oh, I've never invest in stock market, but you may not invest, but actually the money that you Safe or you have in PNB, for example, right? PNB is part of the institutional that already invested part of their investment in stock market. So indirectly, you are already investing in the stock market. So the GLC, some of the companies that the GLC companies uh, have invested is like TM. Uh, they have invested in uh, 
telcos, they have invested in banks like Maybank, CIMB. So when we talk about in, you know, the institutional clients, they, most of the time they are invested, they invest in the main board. So these are some of the lists of the GLC that I mentioned just now. We have like EPF, PMB, Corp, Tabung If you have money in any of the GLC, meaning you're already indirectly investing in the stock market. Because the GLC, of course, they, their investment portfolio are a lot bigger. They invest in property, they invest in private equity, they invest in uh, bonds, they invest in derivatives, they invest in suku and sharia. But stock market and or investment is one of the instrument that they invest in. So these are the GLC. So when we talk about institutional, we have GLC and we also have a non-GLC. The non-GLC, uh, like on the list, we have Aberdeen, we even have um, Maybank Asset Management or CIMB Asset Management. And most of the bank probably have their own asset management or fund management. So they are the ISTI clients that who invested. So probably if you buy uh, insurance or you buy unit trust uh, that you have invested, you probably buy public mutual unit trust, for example. So the unit trust actually, when they have they receive your money, they actually invest part of the money in stock market. So basically, also for those who probably have buy unit trust, indirectly you are also invested in the stock market. So recap: we have GLC like EPF, PMB Corp, and Tabuhaji, and non GLC is like um, you know pub, uh, care. Uh, Pacific, or you have CIMB fund management or asset management or Hong Leong asset management or M Bank asset management or their unit trust. These are all the non GLC, but they are the buyer in the market or the participants. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, these are lists of brokers. What are the rules of the brokers? The brokers act as a middleman in the market. So what they do I and consider as the broker in the in the market. So equities are bought and sold via brokers. People like us, we are licensed. How do we get our license? We get our license through SC and later I will introduce to you a representative from SIDC. And so what we do, equities are bought and sold when you buy or you sell for those who are already in the market you will have to use via a broker trading pro platform so we act as a middleman between the investors and the stock exchange which is Bursa. so for example when you buy you are the buyer and you will go through a trading platform assuming you use hong leong platform so you you use a broker trading platform, which is Song Leong or CIMB or Maybank or Arab Malaysian. So we act as a middleman, and then uh, it will go to Bursa Malaysia uh, platform. So at Bursa Malaysia platform, when you key in your order, it will your order of your buy have to match with whatever that is available at Bursa platform for a seller. So your buy price and the sell price have to match. Then your trade will be matched. Assuming that you want to buy a shares at 3 ringgit, but nobody want to sell at 3 ringgit, so no match is done, so your order will be queuing on Bursa or on the screen that you can see that your, your order is still hanging at Bursa Malaysia until there's a seller that will want to sell their stock at 3 ringgit. Then, your stock will be matched, then it will consider done. So, in total, there's about 29 uh, middlemen. Some of them, uh, can we have uh, the next slide, please? Can I have the next slide? Okay. So, some, okay, the middlemen are divided into three. The middlemen, that is where we have a local investment banker. Under this investment bank, they have a stock broking. So, this stock broking, for example, they are bank back. They are as I mentioned, these are some of those uh, local middlemen that is bank back. So like Hong Leong Investment Bank, M Bank, M Investment Bank, CGS, where CIMB have changed their name to CGS, 
and these are some of the logo the kenanga or you have rhb these are all the local investment bank that treat as a middleman and we also have a non bank bank some of the list that is non bank bank can i have the next slide please Okay, we have like BIMB Securities or C, you know, we have some like Apex Securities, MNA Securities, Malacca Security. These are non bank bank. What is the difference between uh, lease of securities that is bank bank and non bank bank? When it is bank bank, that means there's a bank, they are supported by the banks, and normally they provide what we call a full fledged services. For a non bank bank, there is Probably they do have a research team, but it's not a full fledged. When we said full fledged, for example, I, I let me speak for example, like in Hong Kong Investment Bank, we have a research team. So our research team will come out uh, on a daily basis a report on a particular stock. For example, today we will have a recommendations of a sector that probably that we will recommend for you to have a look at, and in that sector. We will also have a recommendations of a stock that you may want to acquire for today or maybe for the next one week, for example. So that is the difference between the bank bank and non bank bank or a full fledged, I would say, a full fledged broker with a research. So they provide you with a research. Uh, facilities and they also have an analyst that will also assist you if you have any inquiry on a certain or particular stock you can call them and they probably will be able to assist you you know to understand more about the stock as i mentioned you know when you want to go into stock market i would encourage for people especially for those who is not from the investment uh, background or who doesn't have any study on investment or on financial or accounting for that matters you know i would encourage you actually to acquire at least a basic knowledge on certain stock that you want to invest in you know even from the famous investors i think everybody uh, knows the famous investors or the most popular investment then investors you know he always said uh, you must have knowledge and what i want you know to share with you today is not to just get excited to go into stock market but make sure you acquire at least a basic knowledge on stock market or at least the stock that you think you want to acquire or you want to buy in the stock but how do you do that? I will share with you in a moment. Okay, basically, can I have the next stop? Okay, these are some of the list of foreign brokers. So when you talk about capital market, I want to, to share with you again, we have a regulators, we have a middleman, the middleman is the brokers where you have investment bankers, you have non-investment bankers, and you have a foreign. And here are some of the list of the foreign broker that is in the market so just to create the awareness these are some of the foreign brokers that is also part of the middleman and most of the time they services their clients which is from overseas to acquire a shares or stock in our market so we do have international or uh, foreign uh, investors that invest in our market in our stock market so some of the names that probably some of you are very familiar with are CLSA, JP Morgan, UBS and other JP Morgan and Nomuras. Okay, so can I have the next slide? Okay, I'm going to share for those who have not started investment or investing in the stock market, I just do, I will take you a guide how you can start uh, to open your trading account or your CDS account. Okay, first step, next slide. You need to, to open what we call a trading account or a CDS account with any of the PO. PO are the participating organization. 
these are the brokers that I mentioned earlier. There are 29 of them where you can go to any of these 29 participating brokers. You know, you have to open a trading account with this stock broking. Uh, what you need to do is you need to open a trading account and also a CDS account. What is a trading account? A trading account is where you will manage the trading account is where it will manage your cash transaction and your CDS manage your equity holdings incoming and outgoing that will record all your transactions. So what you need to do is, can you show uh, the previous pictures, please? The previous slide. Yeah, okay. So what you need to do, let's say you are an investor here, right? So what, let me see. Okay. These are you. You and your friends probably are discussing. Okay, so then you have to choose which broker that you want to choose, assuming you choose an A broker. So what you need to do is you can walk in or you can do online, but most people prefer to do online. But if you ask me, I if you do, you're not familiar, it's the first time for you to trade, I would advise you to go to a physical of the investment bank or the broker or any of the 29 participating organization so when you are there you say you want to open a cds account and trading account someone will help you to open the cds and the trading account okay so then you will have to choose whether you want uh, to do a nominee or a direct trading account so when you are at the counter the girl or the person in charge will help you to explain the difference between the nominee and the direct trading account. What are the benefits of nominee account and what are the benefits of the direct trading account? Then you have to put in cash in order for you to trade. As I mentioned earlier, you can choose whether you want to invest online or offline. What is the difference online and offline? I will explain to you later, but I just want to share these are the process. So you have to choose either online or offline. Once you have choose, if you choose to go offline, then you need to have a remiser. But if you choose to do online, meaning you will trade on your own and you do not need a remiser to trade on behalf of you. So basically, what you need to do, I will explain to you what is a online and what is offline. Okay. When you, if you choose online trading, you make sure you should have your username, your password, and your broker website address. So you will log into your account and get familiar with your interface. What is the benefit of you do online? It's cheaper alternative, but for those who already know what you want to buy, so it's okay you know, for you to have online because you already know, you already done your research, you have enough knowledge or you have an experience or you already attended a few courses and seminars, so you think you are well equipped and you're already knowledgeable to go into the market. Then you can choose to go online and so you will trade on your own. So you will have a screen that looks like this. So at the end of the day, inshallah, with the right guidance, with the right knowledge, you will make profits in the market. But what I want to share with you when you invest in stock market, you know, there are some people who will win and there are some people who will lose in the market. So later, I will share with you the step um, and the mindset that you need to prepare yourself before you go into stock market. Okay, can I have the next slide, please? Okay, as I mentioned earlier, uh, okay, we can skip this one first. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay. Okay, in the market, when you go later, you know, once you have registered, you can know there's a lot of sectors. This is just sectors that is available in the market. So we have banking, oil and gas, healthcare. The beauty about this industry, you know, when you are in this industry, you have knowledge about multiple industry, not just about one industry. So you, you know, you will have, you will know, for example, in our industry, 
in our job daily we need to have a multiple skills and multiple knowledge of multiple industry not just one so that is the beauty about in this industry of stock working and you have the access to the company for example if i want to know about the banking industry i have access to uh, to meet up with the ceos of the banking industry if i want uh, to know about the oil and gas industry i have access to the ceos of the oil and gas industry like dilium or even like petronas and if you talk about healthcare or gloves companies you know you have the opportunity to meet with the owner of the gloves industry for example uh, top gloves or even like supermax that stanley you know these are just an example so you have the opportunity to meet up uh, with people in the industry that's the beauty about being in this stock working industry okay uh, can we have the next slide okay so basically uh, i want to elaborate before we go to the next session i want to elaborate slightly on when we talk about online okay let's go let's say you decide for example, just now I mentioned whether you decide to go online or offline. Assuming that you decide to go offline. So if you decide to go offline, you need to have a remiser. A remiser is the one who will place your order. So what you need to do is you need to key in your order. But you, because you are offline, you are not able to key in your own order. So you have to call your remiser and you have to tell your remiser what stock that you have choose. For example, you have choose to go into banking and you have to be specific which stock in the banking industry that you have chosen. And you have to indicate the volume, wrapper stock. So, for example, kata you nak beli A stock, uh, kata last stock, Maybank. This is just an example. Don't quote me. Okay, uh, you nak beli berapa? You nak beli berapa lot? You have to tell them and the price. So, your remiser actually will key in on your behalf. Tapi, if you choose to do online yourself, so you will key in. The difference is that when you choose to have a remiser, there is a charges uh, on you by the remiser. But if you do online yourself, there is no remiser fees, but there is other fees that, like BUSA fees or the clearing fees that you have to pay. So that is the only. So it's a bit cheaper when you, you do it on yourself, when you choose to do online yourself busa malaysia actually will be still will be you will still use the busa malaysia trading platform so this whatever order that you key in will still go through busa punya platform okay for example when you uh, want to buy eh, when you want to buy a chosen counter after doing your research so like i mentioned please do your research you know jangan ikut 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 ni sometimes uh, you are lucky, but most of the time you will lose in the market. So my advice, if you want to go for especially for the first time buyer in the market, please do some research. And once you have book up your trading account ataupun your CDS account, you tanya, you know, your remiser, you are the reporter on certain stock. And most of the time, the remiser be happy to share with you the research report yang dikeluarkan oleh company dia. So it is advisable, for example, before you want to go and buy a certain stock, at least do some research or do some reading on that particular stock. So at least you know that what you are buying and kenapa you beli. Yeah? At least you know, at least for at least you tahu apa company tu buat. Okay. Uh, so basically uh, this is our first session so i hope uh, i've shared with you knowledge you know that you know about the capital market who are the players in the market and then uh, katakan if you key in order tadi i mentioned to you that ada sc ada busa malaysia kata you beli for example and then suddenly you dapat confirmation slip so when you buy a stock you will get a confirmation slip tapi apabila you dapat your confirmation slip tiba-tiba apa yang you suruh dia beli dengan apa confirmation slip tu bagi kat you tak sama for example so what you can do 
you can call the companies atau remiser tu kata okay, uh, apa yang I suruh beli dengan tu tak sama. Assuming you punya complain tidak dilayan oleh that PO, that company ataupun that remiser, okay, you boleh bawa isu ni kepada SC tapi bawa SC dia ada SIDRC that is Securities Industry Dispute Resolution Center. That's why I kata you kena ada knowledge. If you know everything about the ecosystem of the capital market, bila you bermasalah, you know where to go to. So dekat di Securities Industry Dispute Resolution Center, kalau kata dia PO tadi, company tadi atau remiser tadi are not helping you to resolve uh, you punya masalah, you can go and write to SIDRC. So uh, I would like to encourage you all at least sebelum you want to go into stock market, please uh, book up website Bursa Malaysia, have a look at Bursa Malaysia, what is Bursa Malaysia is all about, apa facilities-facilities yang ada, apa training-training yang diorang sediakan dan apa, macam mana you want to learn more uh, about this stock market because this is just pengenalan because I don't want you all to go into stock market without having at least a basic knowledge on stock market. It is very dangerous. I can assure you most people yang masuk stock market ikut-ikut. At the end of the day, you lose money instead of you make money. The reason you want to go into stock market is because you nak buat duit, bukan you nak lose duit. But on my second session, Karang, I can share with you to know where is your profile and what kind of investment that you should go into in the stock market. Dan stock market ni, kita ada growth stock, kita ada dividend stock where kita should look at at look at kita punya profile as an investors so i think uh, we have uh, you know cover the regulators we have covered the middleman we also have covered how to buy uh, stock in the stock market but i just want to check uh, with the moderator ataupun mc uh, are we already on time for 20 minutes atau dah overshoot? Okay, uh, not yet Datuk. Uh, Datuk boleh lagi uh, bagi apa? Uh, uh, chat. Yeah. Yes. Oh, maybe Datuk want to, uh, you know, uh, look the comment first or answer some of the questions there. Okay, can uh, can you actually baca for me so I can, apa ni? Okay, boleh Datuk. So, setakat ni saya lihat we have uh, about uh, more than three questions there. The first okay. one from Norbert Lim Wen. Okay, he asked about how to uh, we how to minimize the risk. Okay. How to minimize the risk in the stock market. Okay. That, okay. To be honest, when you talk about risk, okay, in the stock market, the the biggest risk is not about losing money. The biggest risk is when you go into the stock market without having a proper knowledge. Mm -hmm. So my advice to minimize your risk is make sure you acquire enough knowledge before you go into stock market. You see, that is the number one mistake. A lot of people go into stock market not knowing anything about the stock that they want to invest in. So for example, kata tiba -tiba, you want to invest, do you dengar orang Okay, the current, the hot stuff lah kata, okay. I don't want to mention nama the stock. So you go into but not knowing apa the future plan. What is the strategy of the company? Who are the companies? Who are the person behind that companies? So you, when you talk about minimizing your risk is that you have to have knowledge. When I talk about knowledge, you must have the fundamental and you must have a technical. When you talk about the fundamental knowledge where you must know how to evaluate but that is to go further lah. Itu nanti kita akan cerita. So when you talk about fundamental, then you talk about the valuation of the stock. Do you know? Okay, for example, most of you all, when you go into the stock market, katalah you beli tiga ringgit. You tahu ke sebab apa stock tu berharga tiga ringgit? I can tell you, most of you all cannot answer me why that stock is tiga ringgit. Betul tak? Because you ikut-ikut because orang kata beli. So that's why what I'm trying to do is to minimize. For example, if you have enough knowledge, for example, eh, you tahu stock tu uh, value dia hanya RM3.50. But someone kata, eh, uh, 
Dr. Imawati pergi beli because stok tu boleh naik RM4. Okay. You tak ada knowledge. Okay. So you yes. can beli. Betul tak? Betul. Uh, kalau, kalau you ada knowledge, you tahu stok tu maximum dia punya value when you do your valuation, when you have the fundamental because for example the plan dia ada tiga je plan. So dia dah maximum dia punya plan. Contoh kan. Hmm. Tapi dia kata dia boleh pergi RM4. Macam mana dia nak pergi RM4? Kalau dia tak boleh add uh, naikkan lagi dia punya production unless for example macam sekarang dia boleh sebab harga benda tu naik. So you know you faham what I'm trying to say here because kat sini so you, when you have knowledge you tahu nak evaluate possible ke bila company tu kata dia boleh pergi RM4. So that's why you need to acquire a proper knowledge. You must learn the basic fundamental of the company. At least sekurang-kurangnya you mesti tahu company tu buat apa. Apa the core business right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So kalau dia kata tiba-tiba dia kata dia dia nak dia ada tapi dia actually you dah you know about the company. Company tu actually kecil je. Boleh ke dia pergi? So for example that's why you need a company yang ada research. For so, kalau you tak tahu, you tanya. Kalau you ada remiser, you call remiser. You kata okay, I nak I nak beli this tapi boleh tak you hantar ke I dulu uh, A stock punya report. So dia akan bagi kat you the report dan you baca lah report tu. Dan kalau you tak faham when you baca, you tanya your remiser atau at least you garner the knowledge. So that's why I say, you know, dekat Busa Malaysia ataupun dekat SIDC, they have uh, where they train you to understand and have a basic knowledge on stocks that you want to go. Industry, you can go and understand the industry atau understand about the stock itself. Yeah? Okay. Then the second one, um, for the beginner, what is the minimum capital to invest for the stock? from Atira Shazana MN. The minimum, okay. the minimum capital. Okay, minimum. Okay, actually you, you kena tengok at the stock that you want to buy. Because for example, uh, katalah you ada 100 ringgit. You can invest, tapi it will be a lower stock. So maknanya, kata contoh, ni I bagi contoh. Kata kan stock tu harga dia 1000. You tak ada 1000 ringgit. Tapi you boleh beli in small lots where if kata you ada seratus ringgit, you cakap dengan remiser. So the remiser, but of course you cannot buy the big stock. You have to buy a small stock when uh, you punya uh, start capital is small. So you can invest as small as 100 or 500. You know, uh, for especially if you are young, graduates, baru start, you know, you just start putting aside a small amount because you are young. You know, later on our second session, I will share with you the advantage of being young and investing, start investing when you're young. Tapi tak apa, if you're not young pun, it's okay because as you age, uh, you already have more capital actually, but it is a different portfolio that probably that you will have. So like I mentioned tadi, you know, you, you, you can you know, you can, I would encourage for people, young people, even as a students, can, uh, to go and encourage themselves to start investing because the implication, because of the compounding effect on um, investment, eh, when you reach certain age, you will see the return, actually. Mm -hmm. So, it okay, depends so on the unit price, right, Dato'? Eh? And then? Uh, depends to the unit price, right? Yes. You um, need price value juga lah. You know, kalau you beli yang 10 ringgit, you tak boleh lah beli dengan 100 ringgit. So, you can yeah. tengok lah counter. Yes, you have to look at it. The, but there are some good value stock. For example, if you look, you look at the ACE market. Okay, kita dekat market ni, kita ada main board, kita ada lead market and kita ada ACE market. Okay, so most of the stock that is listed at the main board, actually they are more about uh, premium lah. Tapi ACE ni slightly cheaper. And but this market ni, there is a bit high risk but high return. But main board, there are some that high risk, high return. But for young people, I think you you can look at this market because you have a long uh, journey of investment. So you can afford to go into this market. But for people who have individuals, yeah, for example, I thought, I'm, I don't really encourage if you're new to go into lead market because lead market ni dia lebih kepada sophisticated individual investors. That means people with experience in the market or people who have a high risk appetite. 
uh, in the market. So lead market ni lebih kepada orang kata high net worth ataupun sophisticated in individual investor. So maybe for uh, new you only look at is ataupun main board. Okay, so we already have three, right? Uh, hmm. People who ask question, betul? Uh, Kit, uh, the, the third one. Okay, okay. Lee Fong, uh, she said, if I open a, and trade a account with foreign broker, can okay. I do trade on different countries stock exchange? And if yes, is there any limit uh, on the country? Okay, so I think, uh, yes, actually, if you open with a foreign broker, no issues, you can trade in Malaysia. But actually, I just want to get a clarification. If you want to trade in a different market, not necessary, you have to open an account with a foreign broker. Actually, even with a local broker, we do provide a platform for you to trade a global if you want to buy regional stocks or global stocks. So actually, it's vice versa. So in terms of the limit, it depends on the, uh, that particular institution or participating organization. So for example, if you open with this foreign broker, so maybe you want to check with that foreign broker, what are their limit and what are their limitation. Even I, I also want to share with you, there are, there are facilities what we call a collateral. You know, sometimes uh, they do provide where cutter you can get a facilities that call margin facilities for you to trade uh, in the participating organization. Lah. So that is some other facility. So what my advice is when you open an account uh, with that particular participating organization, you can ask them what are the facilities, margin facilities ataupun collateral uh, facilities that they provide uh, for those individuals that open an account dengan diorang. Okay, uh, now is my time uh, to ask question. Okay, mm -hmm. I would like to ask, uh, maybe uh, Dr. Irmawati can choose lah uh, who can answer this. Okay, I want to share with you actually, I have with me today is Starbuck. Oh, Starbuck. Starbuck. Kak, Starbuck punya card dalam oh, ni Dalam ni ada tiga puluh ringgit. Okay, so I want to give away uh, for those who can answer my question. Okay. okay, my question is, who are the three regulators of the capital market? Okay. So that only for student, yeah, professor <laughs> tak boleh jawab. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, your answer where? You can write down your comment in uh, English or Malay uh, uh, apa, language uh, in our apa, in our FB comment there. You can write down your comment there. Write the answer. Anyone? Who are the three regulators? Tak nak ke? Tabak? Tiga puluh I need Cahaya Kasih. Okay, wrote uh, Busa okay. Malaysia, BNM and SC. Is it correct? Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. So, I need you all to yeah, to help me uh, to get the detail of the person who answered the question and I will send this uh, mm -hmm. to you all lah nanti. Yeah? So, so you, all... you want uh, you want the, the card of uh, Starbucks. Okay. So yeah? you will get the Starbucks that have 30 ringgit dalam ni. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to give another one. So I have another question. If you from, you know, uh, I mentioned about Tiga, um, okay, there's a step. Who are the players in, who are the participants? You know, you if you can mention me, who are the participants in the capital market? Oh, okay. Is it the same coupon, the, the same card? Uh, yes, it's still Starbucks. Oh. Yes, I, it's a different, but it's still Starbucks. Okay, one more <laughs> <laughs> Dato, okay. can you repeat again the question, Dato? Okay, dia macam ni. Tadi, okay, dia ada tiga participan I mentioned in the market, right? Uh -huh. We have first session tadi, I mentioned tiga, which someone has already answered. And then yes. we also have the buy side. Who are the buy side? And then kita ada siapa? Untuk that buy side, they have to go through siapa. So there are three level of people that involved in this 
uh, transaction you know uh, kita ada A kita ada B dan kita ada C kita kena ada tiga orang ni untuk this transaction to be completed untuk complete satu transaction lah yes right. okay anyone uh, Nasrul Hanif institution retail forage <laughs> I do. I think this not Nasrul Hanif institution retail forage is it correct Datuk? Uh, there is only one. Kita ada tiga layer. Yang tu betul. Dia ada institutional, dia ada individual. Yeah. Dia ada, okay, that they are they are all in the same category tau. So yeah. these are all buyer. Yeah. So then kita ada siapa lagi? Uh, let him answer again. I still want him to try. Okay, Nasrul Hanif wrote again bursa broker investor. Yes, that's the answer. Uh -huh. one. Okay, so okay. Nasrul, can you get Nasrul punya... FB. Nanti kita contact. Atau Nasrul lah ni boleh message kepada admin lah. Admin FB. Ya? Yeah? Okay. So uh. these are the two. Okay. So I think good. So at least we have an active participant. I wish we can communicate, you know, so we can talk to them. Tapi tak apa. Uh, I just want to say, okay, yeah, these are the <laughs> Okay. These are the first session. So at least we have taken that out. So at least you understand you have some um, kata idea what capital market is all about atau siapa the players beside you the players so you understand there are other players in the market and you also need to understand the one that drive the market uh, is the insti client you know your epf your pmb corp tabaji they are the main player in the market you know mm -hmm. so it's good for you to, like i mentioned i want to revive balik you know buka lah bursa malaysia punya website you know have a look what do they have to offer boost mm -hmm. sc punya website or even certain brokers that have a facilities and also uh, SIDC lah. Uh, SIDC will have a few courses where you can join and attain and to acquire more knowledge. And of course, there are other people out there who provide, but make sure you choose. Okay, this is another one. My advice, when you want to choose the participating organization ataupun broker, make sure they are regulated by Bursa Malaysia. Eh? Well, just any uh, platform that is not regulated. So you mm -hmm. are protected uh, by the regulators. Okay. So now uh, we will go into our second question. I think this is one of the most important uh, that you need to know. Okay. I think let's go into the investor cycle. Okay. I'll go back to the slide, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Today, I not share dengan you all. Uh, I'm sure you all, some of you all need to know. Okay, now is the inv investor's life cycle. When we talk about investor's life cycle, right, you need to understand where you are in the investor's life cycle. It is very important, the element of financial planning and wealth management. The investor's life cycle ni, is where you're going through three basic stages you know okay, let me see uh, where is this thing I can, uh, okay so you have three basic stages now in investor cycle so let's say since majority of people i start with the first stage lah, okay where you are positioned in the life cycle so if you are a student ataupun you are graduates atau you have just started your career you will fall into the first category of the investor cycle. Your position has an implication for your asset allocation and type of stock that you probably want to invest. So we start with this first stage here. Yeah? So this first stage, kita panggil accumulation. So this stage yeah, where you all, most of the student, uh, where you are now, we call you accumulation. Why we call you in, in accumulation? Accumulation is because relatively you have long time at upon long horizon now that you can invest. You have time to recover. Katakan if uh, you have some losses but you can recover from any short term fluctuation in terms of the real value of your investment portfolio. This means you can assume a higher risk to take advantage of the investment opportunity in the market. So, macam ni, in investment ni, the theory is that high risk, 
high return. So if you are young, you are assuming you are like 20 to 20 to 25. But uh, for this accumulation phase, normally is people that age between 25 to 35. But sometimes even extend to those uh, that is 40. So during this accumulation phase, can your investing is more of growth in your stock. You choose a growth stock that is sensible. It's high quality, smaller companies, but worth considering because this type of stock can be more volatile. But for investors with a long term investment horizon, cut 30 years, after 25 to 30 years, that is time to recover. So basically, what I want to share with you if you are young, like at 20, 25, 20, 25, 30, you actually have a longer time of horizon to invest. You can take higher risk. You can, that's why I mentioned tadi, you can go into A stock, A C A C E, ataupun even main board, you can go to more of a, a volatile, ataupun the stock yang, you know, that volatile lah, that they're not a dividend stock, but they don't pay high dividend, but the chances of the stock going up is there. That's what we call a growth stock. Because company is small, they have a room to grow. So when you invest in the company, there's a probability you will make some capital gain in the company. So this is the profile well. Most of you who are graduating or student belong to this category. Why do I say that? Because you you need to invest to make money, you know, because you need to buy uh, probably some of your daily needs. It begins with your income. Okay, for those, maybe you start small for students, but for those young going into the workforce, so probably you can start accumulating uh, you when you stop slowly, you start small, but throughout the years, you will accumulate your wealth. At this age, your, deep, your focus of this stage is accumulating your wealth. So what is that? That is to be disciplined with your money. What I want to share with you, kalau you ada duit, tapi you ada hutang. So my advice, you buy your hutang first. You know, uh, it's not wise for you, kata you ada duit, seribu ringgit, kata you ada hutang credit card, uh, you kata, oh tak apalah. Uh, maybe I mine stock market, I can make money, I pay for my credit card. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Tapi the theory of investment, it is good to pay your hutang. But if you have extra money, then you invest in the stock market. Invest as much as possible because retirement is a long way for accumulators. I call you all accumulation phase. So this is the stage where you actually accumulate your wealth. So your savings too, yes, you have uh, to save some, but you can invest slightly more or you can go into a growth stock at a more high risk stock because you have a long way to go. You probably have another 30 or 40 years to invest in the stock market. And so probably you would pick a growth stock with a higher risk and higher return. Okay, so like I mentioned just now, I, I just want to mention, but don't quote me. For example, there are certain stock like um, revenue, for example. What does a revenue do? A revenue, what they do is they pro provide the technology when you, you know, when you what payment, uh, you gonna with payment, ataupun uh, you what your credit card payment or any form of payment. So revenue going forward, you think that technology is the industry that uh, people are going into in the future. So when a company that is related uh, to technology, you know, they may be small now, there is a potential for it to grow, but there is a high risk. This is just a probability. So when you invest in the company, assuming that the company grow with the industry, then your investment will grow. But as a young investor, you can take that risk because assuming uh, you didn't make it in this investment, okay, I wouldn't say you lose money, you invest in that company and suddenly your, your money is locked. 
but you still have you will still acquire income you know month by month and years by year so you have uh, the probability of getting time to invest further but not for people who have passed at certain age or at a different investor cycle so when you talk about accumulation fees for example right beside investing in a stock market we have mutual funds we have investment trusts we have etf etf is something that focus on growth stocks that are good way to invest if you're just starting out because etf ni macam ni uh, what they give kata for example you have no idea which stock to buy but you are interested to go into a construction a companies but you have no idea so by investing in uh, construction etf uh, stocks for example that limit you in your risk but you are still investing in the sector that you think that will uh, have a potential to grow in the future so they focus on growth stocks that are good way to invest if you're just starting out this investment can generate fantastic long term return while diversifying your capital over many different companies so when you are the accumulation phase that is where most of you all i do think that it's okay for you all to invest in growth stock or stock that is on kind of volatile but have a potential of a growth stock what is the benefit of investing early so you know i do encourage for the young people out there regardless even if you're not in the investment uh, graduates at a point you have no ideas but do take the initiative to understand about the products that is available in the market you know uh, you can like i mentioned you know uh, later we can even share uh, i will give my private email if you have more question to ask about investment or advice uh, i do accept uh, further question you know after the session and why why you need even if you start investing small amount a month yeah it is going to compound it when it compound so eventually one day it, when you reach at the age you know like if you invest now 35 years later you be surprised that you probably have a amount of money that you never imagine but imagine if you never invest in any form of financial uh, investment when you reach a certain age you only ambil gaji or probably you only have your epf or your pension fund so do invest i do encourage young people to start investing young as a beginner your money do compounded and the beauty is that because it's compounded over uh, many years like 35 or 40 years the benefit is that every time when you invest early or you know every time when the company issue a dividend usually you will get a big bigger slice of the pie of the companies so often next time the company pay a dividend you get a dividend but my uh, advice is not to take that dividend not to spend on that dividend you reinvest by late let the money working for you so you are earning money on the money you earn voila so you never know if you start investing by the time you reach 40 or 50 you could already have at least quarter or half a million like 500,000 you never know if you start investing but if you don't then you probably will just depend on your day to day paycheck or you just depend on your uh, epm money or your pension funds so that is the speech that we mentioned earlier so when we talk about accumulation at by valley so that is normally for people who still in college or people who start working and up to the age of 35 or 40 then you will go into the second phase of investment what i call a consolidators consolidators are people have typically been working for at least 20 years their income tend to be higher and their net worth probably already have 
you know, they probably already own a car. Tadi, when you are at the accumulator study, you probably, you know, started to buy cars ataupun you save money uh, to buy a house ataupun you save money nak kahwin, you know. So, it's a different uh, scenario of investors. So, when you are already at this consolidation, by 40, you are most likely uh, to be in this accumulation phase. You have less time until retirement. So your risk tolerance is slightly to be lower than the accumulators. The accumulator study, they can go totally grow stock. Tapi for people in this consolidation, I would advise you to mix your punya investment, some growth stock and some dividend stock. The consolidation is a state cycle where uh, you probably need to spend money on your house or you need to have halfway to settlement of your house. Your earnings are likely to be higher too and therefore you should have more capacity to invest in the stock market. So basically, we will look at different scenarios. So probably most of the professor of the lecturers uh, belong to this category, consolidated. So they can still accept moderate risk, but not so much in the portfolio. But your primary goal should be planning for retirement. However, in this phase, there is less time to retirement. So yours probably 15 to 20 more years. There is more focus on capital preservation. Many investors choose to lower the allocation of equity and however, they will retain the allocation. You could uh, invest mix lah. So you have to have a balance of growth stock and a dividend stock. Okay, let me give you an example of balance. Uh, and this is just an example. I'm not quoting you. For example, like uh, Sam Darby. Uh, you know, Sam, they, I would say that's a balance stock because they give good dividends, but they also have a potential of growing so you know when you are in this stage these are the kind of stock that you probably look at because if um, for example the stock tak bagi you return on their point of growth but they give good dividends for example and later i will also share uh, with you list of companies that give good uh, dividend stocks that so you can have a look at growth stock and a dividend stock investors in this phase uh, for example 40 maybe you want to balance like 40 percent growth it depends on your punya risk appetite so if you want to uh, be safe you have more dividend stock but if you you can have 60 percent dividend 40 percent growth in your portfolio Tapi andai katakan that you want to go aggressive, you think uh, you have the risk, higher risk appetite, so you can go the other way around. You can have uh, 60 growth, 40 dividend, 40% 40 of your portfolio uh, is on growth stocks. So 60% growth stock, 40% dividend stock. So most of dividend stock need are large cap. So that means you are balancing between A's and also large stock, uh, large cap stock which belongs to the main board. So that means you punya investment probably will be balanced between the ACE market and also the main board. Tapi dalam main board pun, there is some stocks that you can still look at the growth stocks and there are some dividend stock that you can invest in. So basically, uh, you still have the potential to generate decent returns over the long time. So for those who never invested at this age where you are already coming to 40 but you never invest but you want to start investing, yes, uh, you can. In fact, you are encouraged because you still have probably another 20 years before your retirement. But the capital that you have have to have a balance of growth and dividend stock because you don't have 40 years like the accumulators where they probably have 40 years of journey of horizon before they retire. So basically, uh, we have accumulators. We have the, the second 
consolidation or preservation you know because you're trying to preserve what you already have and now we have so you belong to this category of people uh, or investors that you already have capital, but your obligation or your responsibility is different because uh, you already start doing, no. Uh, jangan tukar slide, please. I'm not done because I'm still going to this third. So, uh, these are the last phase. That is the consolidation or preservation. However, this is the phase where you have less time to return retirement so probably people that fall into this category people who only have few more years to retirement for people who never invested but they still want to invest so my advice is you just choose a dividend stock because at this uh, retirement because you only have few more years the money that you have you know, that you want to invest so you have you need to spend so you need to preserve your money that you have when you fall into this category having said that a small allocation to blue chip equity is probably wise at this phase so this is uh, to combat the effects of inflation over this period of life and also to maintain some exposure to low restock but could be a good idea for people at this phase and i just want to check uh, moderator, are we on time? Have we passed the 20 minutes for this session? Okay, yes, Dato. Uh, you uh, can, okay. yes, you can invite Puan Sarima to check in. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. uh, we will do the Q&A later, yeah, for this session. Okay, so I think um, I've done that, but later, uh, if we have time, I will wrap up the three phase just now, but that mm -hmm. is most important so you must know which category you are in before you want to invest in the stock because of the time limit and of the uh, you punya duit yang ada tu you nak preserve especially for those are going into retirement but for student you can go into a growth stock okay so now uh, we have talked about the uh, the industry we have talked about the life cycle of the investors we want to talk about the job opportunities in the industry so i have invited friend of mine from SIDC, uh, Puan Sarima. So she will share with you uh, the, the courses and some of the knowledge platform that we provide in the capital market. Welcome Puan Sarima. And Puan Sarima is, has been long in the industry. She is where all the brokers need to know mm -hmm. because she provides mm -hmm. courses and she, SIDC adalah bawa SC. So we need to get licensed under SIDC power ni Puan Sarima. <laughs> okay, thank you Janaida and, and I, I I believe that every, uh, the participants of this uh, session has benefited from uh, Datuk Zunaida's uh, uh, sharing sessions with the knowledge about how to become a smart investor in the stock market. Okay, today um, I would like to share with you about uh, life beyond uni. What you can be, uh, what you can become in the capital market as well as how SIDC can help you. Okay, uh, next slide please. But first you want to know who is SIDC. Uh, next slide. Okay, SIDC is actually the trading arm of the Securities Commission Malaysia. Uh, we, are, uh, we are sponsored by Securities Commission Malaysia and Bursa Malaysia. Next slide. And our function in the capital market is uh, we do talent development. Uh, this is talent development is your area where we develop graduates into uh, and we train them and then uh, we place them in our industry. And then professional development when you are the, you're already uh, an industry player, you of course have to continuously uh, develop yourself and this is where SIDC comes in. And the third one is investor education. Uh, we do educate investors on how to invest uh, wisely uh, and to ensure that uh, you minimize your risk like Datuk mentioned just now that when you have low knowledge or you don't have insufficient knowledge, then your risk is higher. So we do that part on investor education. 
And uh, we also provide licensing examinations uh, for those who want to enter the this uh, market. Uh, and we provide training for the directors, or especially the public listed companies directors. And then we also do competency assessment management system. And, also, and uh, we do a lot of sharing sessions with international regulators all around the world. But one thing that... Uh, as a graduate, how you can participate in the capital market? Number one, you can become an investor, or number two, you become you can become the professionals in the capital market. Uh, next slide, please, Admin. Okay, so what are the career opportunities in the capital market? Next. Okay, dalam capital market, you have all these uh, uh, areas. Okay, like investors, you can invest in equities or stock stock market. You can invest in bonds or so. This is uh, they have retail bonds and then derivatives. You may have heard about the futures market, group palm oil futures, the single stock futures, and then uh, you can also uh, there is a opportunity to invest in private equity and also in uh, digital assets, for example, uh, cryptocurrencies or all those peer-to-peer -peer lending. Actually, there are many uh, investment opportunities in the capital market. All you need to do is to uh, research or search up what, uh, invest, what kind of investment that is suitable for me. Because if you want to invest, of course, you want to diversify your portfolio. So uh, if you invest in stocks, well, how you can hedge? You can hedge with derivatives. But uh, or, or you can add in uh, unit trust uh, to minimize your risk. Or if you want to try uh, cryptocurrencies. So all this is the investment opportunities. Uh, well, okay, I saw one question in the Facebook, like warrants is under which category? Warrants is under the equities and stocks. Okay, so if we have these segments in the industry, definitely you will have companies where you can apply jobs uh, at these companies. Next slide, please. So these are your career app, uh, options uh, in the company uh, because we have a lot of career options, whether in uh, dealing sites or whether in the uh, uh, investment sites, whether in fund management companies, private equity. And this is the list of uh, career opportunities that you can um, explore uh, as graduates. Because most of these uh, career opportunities, um, they require you to, to be licensed. Later on, I will uh, share with you on how you can uh, join this uh, capital market, or on how you can sit for the examinations and later on uh, use the result of examinations to apply for the, in these companies in the capital market. Next slide. Okay, these are your potential employers. There are actually many employers. We are talking about 315. This is minimum. But there are also other capital market providers and services. Like in total, we are talking about close to 400 companies in the capital market. This is, uh, these are your potential um, employers. Next slide. So how do you start your career in a capital market? Uh, next. Next slide. Okay, uh, in the capital market, you can be, uh, there are two types. Eh? One is um, you can just join a company and become the executive. And uh, second type is you become, uh, there are, because you see, like in the financial services, this is a highly regulated uh, uh, industry. When you have, uh, when you are dealing with people's money, of course, you are required to have, um, uh, you need to be licensed. And before you need to be licensed, the regulators would like to know you, you need to have certain minimum competencies to serve the investors because it's either you are a fund manager where you manage people's money or even when you are a remisers or dealers where you are dealing with investors, uh, you are the broker, broker side, but still it deals with money, uh, people's money that invest in stock market. So there is a, re a, a requirement for you to have a minimum competencies. So how do the how does uh, the a regulator like SC checks whether you have that minimum competency? They in order for you to be licensed, uh, you need to sit for SCLE, which is uh, Securities Commission Licensing Examinations. There are currently uh, thirteen modules. 
So uh, here I just list out what the type of modules that you need to take uh, in order for you to operate in these uh, regulated activities. For example, if you want to work with brokers, uh, at least you need to pass uh, module 6 and 7. Uh, and then once you pass the 6 and 7, you can go to any of the investment banks or uh, stockbroking companies and tell them that, okay, I uh, already passed these exams, uh, so is there any employment opportunities? Because currently, uh, recently I had a discussion with the MOHI. They were talking about graduate employability. You know, many universities are looking at how to enhance graduate employability. Personal view, I think it is not only for the universities to think about how to enhance graduate employability, but graduates themselves must think on how to grad to to increase you punya employability out there. The matter uh, employers, macam mana nak nampak that you are more attractive than other candidates. So if you want to come to the capital market, my suggestions is when you are still at a uh, final year ataupun the third year, try to sit for these licensing examinations. Licensing examinations ni actually is a self-study. You can go to SIDC website, nanti I share you the, the link where you can read. Uh, leaders are readers. Huh? You read the, the site where they put their licensing examinations. They have a detailed information on how you can um, you can apa, uh, sit for this uh, SCLE and even cara-cara on how to register. So, when you sign up for the pro, uh, for the licensing examinations, they'll send you the study guide. You learn on your own, baca betul-betul, and then after that, you can sit for the examination dekat Securities Commission. So, uh, based, uh, most of the time, I think for SCLE module 6 or 7, I can say about 50%, 60% can pass, provided that they study. And since you are still in the study mode, because you are all students, so might as well you take the opportunity to take these uh, licensing examinations. If you want to deal in equities or stock market, you take 6 and 7. And if you want to go to futures brokers where you nak uh, um, apply for derivatives, uh, punya license, so you ambil module 14 and 16. You Actually, as a um, students, you can take empat lesson, um, empat exams pun. It, we did not limit that uh, apa, uh, how many uh, exams you can take. And the more exams you ambil and you pass, you terus increase your uh, your employability, uh, the, the matter, all this um, uh, apa, license entities huh, among the brokers. Because when I did industry engagement, I always ask them, what is the key value that you kalau nak tengok from graduates? They said that if the graduates already pass licensing examinations, lagi senang kita nak hire because we don't have to spend time in training them and then send them to sit for licensing examinations and later on license them. And 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 this is what I whenever I do uh, any sharing session with universities, I I, I slowly encourage the students please spend apa uh, masa dan juga sedikit duit you put aside. Because satu licensee examination is only three hundred ringgit saja, and to take this uh, apa all these licensing examinations so that by the time you graduate, you already have your your degree plus all this certification, then you enhance your employability in the capital market. So this is a strategy that for you as a graduate that you can uh, uh, employ uh, to enhance your your uh, uh, employability. And now, uh, I think three nights ago, I heard from our PM, our Prime Minister, about gig economy. Because nowadays, it's no longer the time where when whenever you graduate, there is uh, plenty of uh, jobs out there because every year, I think about two hundred or 300,000 students graduated. Tapi do we have enough uh, sufficient jobs? Because when my time in the 90s, ah, kalau I, I, I graduate, I macam apply kerja macam senang. Kadang-kadang dapat dua, tiga kerja at one time. But now things have changed, especially post-pandemic, I mean, the economic situation, things are not as rosy as it used to be. So people are not talking about you being a job seeker, but you're talking about you creating your own jobs. Like from the capital market, there is also an uh, uh, opportunity for you to work on your own. We call it if you uh, marketing reps, marketing representatives. So how marketing representatives ni actually you introduce uh, investments. Macam, macam you, you attach to a few brokers or fund management uh, companies and then you introduce these uh, investment products to uh, um, 
Apple an investor and you'll get a fee for it. But in order for that to do that, you will need to uh, sit for this formalization program and pass the assessment. Uh, it everything is online, so I think uh, it's not that hard, especially for students at UTM. Uh, and then regardless whether you are from chemistry or engineering students or uh, any other faculties, you can you can uh, participate or take this uh, examination or assessment. Uh, and once you pass then you can go to these companies. You can check with SIDC or Securities Commission website. They normally, they put their list of intermediaries. You number all the names of the companies and then you start Google, tengok website diorang, cari HR and then start sending your resumes. Inform them that you have passed examinations, what examinations and then at least uh, try to set appointment. I think next slide, please. Uh, okay. So this is just now that I I propose to you because previously orang selalu lepas graduate uh, apply kerja uh, kalau dekat broker or fund management companies and then baru dia ambil lesen. Uh, but but if they want to uh, expedite <laughs> dia punya process or nak make them more attractive, you know sometimes you datang a resume, you ada 3.0 or 3.5 or 4 flat punya CGPA and then another person pun ada the same uh, qualifications or the ni. Tapi another person dia ada extra. Dia ada all this, uh, dia dah pass apa SCLE. So if I'm an uh, employer, I would say if uh, the person yang ada extra ni uh, looks more attractive than the person yang ada apa just a degree with um, with a uh, uh, or a good CGPA because now people are looking at how you can value add to their company and at a very least cost because when you go and take all this uh, certification before you join a company, you, the company so tak payah nak spend a lot of time in developing you. You datang-datang with some knowledge and competencies to say that hey, I come here with something that you all need and I can contribute to your organizations where you can license me immediately and I can start bringing business to your company so this is where I said that you have to uh, apa, uh, think about you punya employment, apa, employability, not on the final year but from the moment you join the universities. Because every day you must think, how can I create value to humanities or to people or to people around me? Because even if you're talking about investments and all that, so many people, uh, graduates, apa, students, yeah, I speak, oh, I nak jadi millionaire, I nak jadi billionaire. But in order for you to become a billionaire, you need to touch a billion heart or billions people. Um, and uh, apa, uh, like Mark Zuckerberg, uh, he is a billionaire at 23. But he started Facebook where uh, at this point in time, I think they have more than 2.7 billion users worldwide. So that's why they jadi billionaire. So the same time, uh, Thing juga. Kalau you nak jadi investors or you nak jadi professionals in investment uh, punya industry, you have to think on how you can value it or how you can bring manfaat pada people, as many people as possible. Then only you punya net worth uh, will apa uh, will increase. Okay, I saw Dr. Emma saying that ada apa um, soalan di ruangan komen. Okay, uh, Ashraf Rasidi was asking me, uh, which license module do you recommend for us student? Okay, for you, stud for student, at least take um, module six, seven minimum. Uh, if you want to go into corporate finance, then you take 12 and 19. But at least a six and seven is a, a, for a start. Uh, if need. Uh, you, if you go to SIDC website, www.sidc.com.my, then you, we can have a list of uh, modules that um, you can uh, take and what type of jobs that you can do with that uh, upper, upon passing the examination and being licensed. Okay, uh, next slide please. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, what does it take to, to join the capital market industry? Just another part that I want to share. Because today, we, in the first part of this segment, we talk about investment. Like for SIDC, we have um, like upcoming months. Eh? And you, if you watch out uh, our website, we are going to post uh, programs on investor education. This is how we're going to teach people, the public, young zero knowledge about derivatives, how to invest in derivatives and also in digital assets, in cryptocurrencies. Uh, because nowadays, I know that among the millennials or the young ones, Gen Z, they like to 
to go into this alternative investment. But going into some and uh, something new without any knowledge, as I said before, that it'll pose a higher risk to you. And another thing is about cryptocurrency. Kat sana, kalau without knowledge, you the tendency of you to invest in scam, terjebak dalam scam is very, very high. So, macam mana nak tahu uh, if uh, nak invest in crypto, nak beli Bitcoin or Ethereum and all those tokens, uh, which, which platform should I go? And then what, uh, because the 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 difference between you invest dalam all those Bitcoin dengan stock market, Stock market, if you listen to Datuk Zunaida, they say they have intermediaries, which is brokers. Brokers are the remisers and dealers. So as an investor, you can call them up and tanya about company, tanya tu, tanya ni. But when you invest in the crypto ataupun cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin ke, Ethereum ke, you don't have intermediaries. You tak ada brokers. You straight go to the macam platform, uh, we call it registered market operators macam Luno ke, Tokenize or Synergy. This has been, these are the three, uh, apa, uh, we call it RMOs, registered market operators that been uh, registered with uh, Securities Commission Malaysia. So, when you invest, you, you invest straight dengan apa dengan exchange macam contohnya you beli dekat Bursa Malaysia Street you tak ada any advisor so that's why kadang-kadang people who invest in crypto dia banyak invest in scam sebab dia dengar kawan-kawan especially you know all those WhatsApp group lah FB group lah yang macam-macam uh, apa promoting all these bitcoins but but which one is um, macam which one is real or which one is uh, fake lah tapi nak tahu macam mana nak buat perbezaan tu, okay, I think in starting November, we are going to have a program free which is uh, on digital assets to teach the public about investing in crypto as well as derivatives. So, for you uh, as a student or for faculties, if you want to become investors, start invest in yourself first before you invest in products. A lot of people, they just, because... Uh, one thing so kita kadang-kadang uh, people who make money kita lah stock market market naik waktu terus tulis dia oh today I make money berapa ribu berapa ribu lepas tu kawan-kawan tengok eh macam mana macam mana nak make money macam ni ya eh? so they think it's very easy just beli any stocks and and just make money actually it's not as easy as it looks like uh, you have to have some knowledge you have to know about companies you have to do some research you have to know about keadaan ekonomi ekonomi dunia ekonomi serantau ekonomi Malaysia all of affects the performance of the stock market and even the the company that you you nak invest pun you must know okay the potential of the company like Datuk Sunaida has give a very good detailed explanation about the companies and then about you as an investor dekat which uh, investor cycle you are in so that you can make an informed decision uh, decision so um Uh, like for SIDC pun, we also focus in uh, educating investors so that investors tahu uh, what are the invest, investment products in the capital market. Uh, number two, we also educate investors about their rights and responsibilities as an investors. Because as an investor, you are the hak. Macam pengguna lah, you are the hak-hak pengguna. Even pelabur, so you have hak-hak pelabur. So we educate that. And the third thing is... Um, You also, uh, we we also tell you about the strategy uh, investment so that you will make uh, informed choices, informed decision when you make a uh, investment. So I saw one question from Lee Yi Fong. Where can you register for the program? So far, we have not put up the uh, the advertisement for all these investment related programs. Starting uh, uh, end of October or November, this is where we uh, we will put up uh, the advertisement on our website. And always go and visit www.sidc.com.my. Uh, another program that we have for the graduate is, is Islamic Capital Market Graduate Training Scheme. This scheme. We every year we take about 100 graduates. We will select them, masuk dalam this two months program, online program, and then after that we will place them with companies dalam capital market. Okay, it can be fund management, it can be bursa, it can be any of the companies yeah that participate with us. So uh, they will be trained, give job exposure for four months. So this within this six months where we will pay you, okay, an allowance lah. I think about 1,000 per month for apa. Uh, Uh, per month for six months so uh, from there uh, then if you perform in the company or the company tengok macam you ada potential 
you will may be absorbed by the companies. But if uh, if they did not absorb you for whatever reasons, because sometimes companies they have hit count uh, limit, but then they takkan uh, apa hire anyone. Tak apa, it's okay. Meaning that you have had at least six months experience in the capital market. At least you know what are the jobs in the capital market. Kalau you dapat uh, internship dekat broker, uh, what are the departments in the broker. So the next time you apply for another job, at least you bring that work experience to you and you tak adalah jadi fresh grad dah. You have that experience. So please watch out our website www.sidc.com.my for the program ICMGTS. Uh, and then for the Uh, for apa for investor education program pun check out our website juga and current and if you want to take any um, uh, licensing examinations our website ada even if you want to become marketing reps where if you want to you know be a participant of gig economy you can take this e formalization program in marketing reps or most of our programs are online so even though you do at skudai pun you still can participate except for the licensing examinations uh, for this year kita still uh, apa memerlukan participant orang yang nak ambil exam tu datang ke Kuala Lumpur but uh, in future we may have a remote or proctored punya assessment lah tapi it will be uh, 2021 onwards that's in our plan so far um Uh, okay, Li uh, Yifong, you said you are interested. Thank you for the information. I strongly encourage as a student, please go and visit all these uh, websites uh, that I mentioned before, like Bursa, Securities Commission, uh, SIDC, uh, even all the brokers. Get to know what are the uh, departments ataupun activities that they are, they are in so that you have some uh, information that you uh, when you want to apply for jobs, when you tulis your resume, when you go for interview, you have uh, some knowledge to share with your interviewer or the companies. Even if you are an investor, which is very good, if you start from young, from uh, from your university side, bila you pergi, uh, katalah you interview kat broker, they say that, oh, you ada, you tahu nak apa tu stock market? You ada, I tahu tak apa, uh, siapa bursa, securities commission? At least you confidently can say that I am also an investor in Bursa Malaysia, so I'm familiar with all these regulators um, and also uh, the trading techniques. And at least it shows that you bukan your fresh grad tanpa any knowledge, but in addition to your degree, you also have other uh, apa, other uh, skills and knowledge to to contribute to the companies. I think my time is up. Thank you so much, uh, Datuk Sunaida and Dr. Imawati. And for those of you who have questions, feel free to uh, to just go to our website and post your questions, at, uh, email us. Okay, there is a segment in SRC website. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank you Puan Sarima for sharing um, knowledge on job opportunity in that field, in this field, okay. So, um, uh, we continue to uh, Dr. Zunayda Idris uh, session. Okay, Dr. Uh, uh, I just want to check how long do we have for this Q&A session? Five minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, dia orang tak tanya soalan. I, because I still have a few cards to give away. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, I want to ask uh, a few questions. But before that, I just want to do a wrap up. You know, uh, I want to share with you beside all this uh, qualification that you have, you know, for example, I just shared with you in my industry, qualification, yes, is very important. But what is important is you have to have certain soft skills. One of the soft skills that you must acquire, not only in uh, my industry, I, I spoke to so many HRO. HRO is the human resources officer, people that is the frontliner of any organization. So uh, there are five things that normally they look at. So please, you know, for those out there, if you're looking for a job, not only in this industry, across the industry, you must have a good communication skills, meaning that you have the uh, ability to articulate your punya ideas clearly. Ataupun when you go for an interview, you make sure you communicate with the interviewers, you know, not memorizing, but speak to them, share with them. Uh, your thoughts you know that is one thing you must be able to communicate second you must show that you are team players nowadays they do look for people who actually look for people young can work with diverse personality and have a team spirit in mind instead of driving individual achievement 
you know, you must project that kind of uh, personality when you go for an interview. Then there is another skill that you must acquire is learning agility being, that means you must want to grow and you want to learn more uh, in your mindset. You know, it's not somebody you just because I'm a graduate or I'm someone with master or I'm someone with PhD. In my industry, regardless what is your qualification, but at the end of the day is you punya soft skill, your communication skill, how resourceful you are. And, you know, are you a team player? All that play a very important role in during the interview because in this industry, not only my industry, across the board, all the senior managements and the CEOs, we actually look for quality employees. Yeah? Okay, since we have only have that, okay, I still have a few more cards uh, to give away. So my question is, who can answer, what are the three cycles, ataupun three stages of investors that I mentioned? They are the number specific name, okay. What uh, what do you call? I mean, kalau tak exactly pun, at least give me some indication. Okay. Any takers? Okay. Kuzar Muhazim. Okay. okay. Accumulation, preparation okay. and retirement. Is it correct? Uh, okay. It is correct. Uh, still, I mean, it uh, explained. So, I'll take that as good. So, I will give you a card. That is a guy, is it? Yes. Okay. So I will give you same. Uh, so you will get this card. Also, ada thirty ringgit alami. Oh, so I can I will stab up. So all this actually is sponsored by Anajua Production. So oh. I like to thank you to Anajua Production for sponsoring this uh, stab up punya card for this. I still have. Do I still have time? I still have one more card. Okay. Okay. So, boleh. Boleh. So, can you uh, bagi I at least uh, the the type of stock uh, that you okay? For example, if you you are in the early stage, uh, what kind of stocks that you should buy if you are in the accumulator? For you know, for the university students or someone who just started work, that you know, I mentioned there are two types. You know, first you have to have a type where you can have high risk, high return. So, what do you call that kind of stock? Okay, uh, natural honey again, grow stock. Yes, correct. So, natural the padu one. Wow, I'm going to the first person who wrote the first. Tapa, I think I give a second person to. I got another card, tapi make sure eh, you all monitor eh. Uh -huh. okay. okay, the second person you can answer the other type of stock. I mentioned you that mentioned tadi grow stock. There's another one, so that person can answer what kind of stock is that for retiree. Uh, yeah. Retiree. Okay, Sarah grow stock. Chang Han King grow stock. Lee, really? Lee, wait, wait eh? Lee Yi Fong grow and dividend. Okay, growth uh, growth is one, the other one is dividend. So, I bagilah juga since I already have the card. So, I'm going to give Lee lah. Okay. Lee Fong eh. Okay, ah, congrats. Okay. So, okay. All right. Okay, so we finish all eh. Okay. Yeah. Inshallah. Okay, this is just a basic. So, maybe my next uh, talk series will go deeper then maybe we can teach you how to look at the stock, how to look at growth stock and how to dividend stock. Yeah? That is going forward. Lah. Tapi, I also like to offer, uh, I would like to organize, uh, but the university have to choose. Lah. Uh, maybe those people yang apa ni, that participate today, we can have a trip uh, to KL. Uh, oh. And then, you know, we can visit Bursa, but we can only have one bus ke macam tu, about 40. Okay. Uh, is Busa and also to SIDC. Then maybe at SIDC, Puan Sarima can host kita bila kita ke SIDC. So if they have more questions uh, about opportunity and courses, we can have another session dekat sana. Yeah? So I would like to do that. Uh, this one will, uh, will, we will uh, discuss with our deans, uh, with our chair. Okay. It's yeah. very good trip to KL. Okay. Oh, involved lah. Okay. All right. Um, 
Thank you and so much, uh, Datuk Zunaida and Puan Salima for informative knowledge. And we hope that uh, it has been educational for everyone. And the information game from the sharing session would benefit us, especially for a uh, newbie in stock market investment. Right? Okay. On behalf of FSSSH, uh, thank you all for making time in your busy schedule to join us here today. Wish you all a pleasant day. Insha'Allah, maybe we can conduct a next series. Advanced knowledge on stock market, insyaAllah, ya Dato. And uh, do not forget to, to our technical team, uh, lead by Dr. Nazika, Dr. Shafika and Dr. Iza, and Dr. Dina, uh, who facilitated technical part two. And do not forget to engage, engage with FSSH activity in the future. See you in the next series. Thank you and Assalamualaikum.